Hey guys, welcome to another episode of our Duotone Foiling Tech Talk series. I'm Klaas, I'm standing here with Jerome, our foil designer, and today we want to talk pump foiling. And for that, we have our dedicated new pump foil wing, the AMP 1750. Um, Jerome, what's the idea of this wing? Um, well, we wanted to make something, as you said, dedicated to pump foiling. So first thing we notice is obviously the span on that thing, the aspect ratio is, uh, I think, the highest aspect ratio we have in our range so far. 11.7 um, aspect ratio. And uh, kind of a baby brother, little brother, of the 2145, which we used to know as the Glide, Aeroglide 2145. So I guess we need to clear up a little bit of confusion. Yeah, we maybe have, you, you want to clear it, clear it up. <laughs> we actually have, these two wings have the same span. It's a uh, one meter 43. Yeah. And this was originally designed in the glide range as our dedicated pump foil wing for entry pump foiling to get pump foiling as easy as possible. Um, dock starting um, is pretty difficult to learn. You want something really supportive. So that's what we designed this wing for. Now, since pump foiling becomes more and more of a thing for us, and we decided to make a dedicated pump foil range out of it, mm -hmm. we went for its own name. So we have the AMP, um, obviously future pump foil wings, and this big baby here will be part of the AMP range in the future. Yeah. But um, this is basically the more performance oriented version. Exactly. From the big 2145 Glide, right? Yeah, so we kept what, uh actually work really well, which is the profile. Um, your profile is, is very important when you, when you want to make a good uh, dock start wing because you want to be able to slow right down and recover and you don't want your wing to stall basically. Um, so we, we, we tried quite a few different profiles on the 2145 and we, we ended up picking this one and uh, that's the same one which we carried over. We tweaked it a little bit to make it sort of fit this, this new size, this 1750. We played with the camber a little bit, with the thickness of the profile. Uh, but basically you get that, still, uh, that uh, similar uh, ease of use that we, we had on the 2145 with way more speed, mm -hmm. uh, less sort of ener energy consumption to, to keep pumping. And it's kind of, as soon as you know how to pump foil, you want to switch onto this one pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I can confirm. Much. Like I did quite some runs on the 2145 initially, um, just at home, pumping off the dock, really, really easy. Um, a lot of my friends who never did it and jumped on it, it's like, oh, finally I have a chance. I might need yeah. to get that one. Um, and a lot of them got, that, got it and got into pump foiling. Um, now, jumping on that one, straight away I felt like, oof, I made some times actually and, and, and stopped the speeds I was, I was pumping up to and uh, I think I went around up to three knots quicker yeah. on like two and a half, three knots quicker on the M. So you basically make more mileage in the same time. You sort of cover more ground exactly, uh, just because you're quicker. Exactly, quite a bit quicker. With it, that ground speed, even though the aspect ratio is higher, um, you feel like you can turn a bit better also because you are faster, yeah. you're moving faster, so your response a little bit less stubborn. Um, it's still not a really easy turning <laughs> wing, no, no. obviously. It gives you a lot I'm of stability gonna... and, and glide and, and, and pump, pumping efficiency. That's the main focus. It's not for like pump freestyle. Yeah. For that, you want to go for the whiz probably. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you just want to make that after work workout, um, <laughs> get the heart rate up and make like chase your personal best that's the m for everybody who's already passed the step of just learning how to dock start that's a really great option i believe yeah and then you're holding the new yeah so h part of the 85 yep part of uh, what makes this setup work so well is this new stabilizer as well um it's a high aspect ratio stub um it also, we're using a, a new profile, a uh, bit more symmetric, quite a lot more symmetric actually, if you compare it to the, the P profile we use on the 2145. Um, yeah, it just helps making the pumping easier. Uh, it's a lower drag and uh, it really gives you that sort of projection out of the pump, which uh, 
the P was not specifically very good at. Uh, these one work much better. And uh, for now, we're only launching the 185 with that, that wing, but we actually have a full range coming. Something uh, more is coming, yeah. Something more is coming uh, with more sizes, smaller, bigger. Um, so, yeah, just another sort of line of stabilizer, a little bit more targeted at pumping in general. Pumping efficiency. Projection, yeah. I yeah. can say from my personal testing, uh, it's changing the game. Yeah. Um, in yeah, how you how you project and how efficient you are compared to the P. Like I really like that new 185. Yeah, I, the, I also combine it with a Glide 2145. Yeah. But then going to the amp with this one is uh, it's amazing how how much more efficient you are. It's it's pretty crazy to see how much a stabilizer can change, especially your pumping efficiency. It's uh, you wouldn't really think it would have so much um, incidence on on the pumping, but it. It changes everything from yeah. it can double the distance that you you cover just by changing to that one there yeah. talking um, combinations of um, stabilizer but then also fuse large what is your preferred setting with the amp i'm using it mainly with the 66 Same which way. is yeah it's yeah. kind of like short enough to have a nice cadence when you're pumping but not too short that it becomes too sensitive uh, so i find it a good sort of middle ground yeah, that's what I'd recommend the 66. Yeah, I have some friends who really like the 60, who yeah. are good at pumping. Yeah, um, gives them quite some projection. Um, it's a little bit less easy to just pump and then stand and wait. The yeah, 66 yeah. just gives you that extra bit more stability, a bit more glide just to stand and relax. Yeah, which is I quite like when I want to chase my personal mileage record. I yeah. just pump three, four times, stand, wait. Pump three, four times down weight. The 66 just does that a bit better. Yeah. But then going up to the long fuse, yeah, I think if if you're a box starter and you want to just get into it, the long fuse really helps. That makes sense, yeah. At the start, but then once you're actually pumping, it's not quite as efficient to pitch and yeah. project, right? The longer one, it just feels like you're just pushing a bit more water during your during your pump. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'd recommend also. Obviously, using it with our new Strider board, uh, which is kind of that's all been optimized to work uh, together. The Strider board, this front wing, the H stabilizer, and uh, probably want to stay on our SLS mast, our thicker the mast offering, one. the strongest one, just because of the the span of that wing. Um, I mean, you can pump it on the on the D-Lab mass. I've done it a bunch, and it works. You're light, though, huh? I'm light, yeah. yeah but for uh, heavier guys, I would say. For heavier guys, and it gets just, more twitchy. Yeah, you just feel like there's a little bit of flex, which you would ideally you'd want to get rid of with the with the thicker mass. Yeah. It's just so either the SLS or the SLS quick mount. Yeah. Or obviously the alloy has also similar the alloy strength. Well. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks for the insights, Jerome. I hope you guys uh, find this helpful and uh, enjoy this content. If you do, leave us a like comment if you have questions subscribe for more of these type of tech talk episodes and hopefully see you in the next one